Hi, this is Julie Fur de Winter. Welcome to the Bohemian Gothic Salon. I was asked to talk about what it was like in the early days of goth, so I thought I would do that. Also, um, what it was like uh, dealing with the bigger culture at large being part of the subculture. So I thought I'd start out by showing you a picture of what I looked like in about um, 1981, 82. Um, this is how I used to dress every day, walking outside uh, in Hollywood, California, um, and Westwood, places like that. Uh, I'm wearing a uh, all black outfit with a black lace um, edged veil, a uh, Victorian ruffled headpiece, um, white crosses stitched to my um, jacket, and uh, long black gloves with a bunch of um, bracelets and, you know, 13 earrings in my ear and uh, pretty heavy duty makeup. So. It's a pretty heavy look, um, so that was uh, that was then, and then um, also I have this other one that appeared in this magazine, Tattoo Time. This is a little bit more of a death rock look, I guess you could call it. Um, that was a uh, picture taken at a tattoo parlor I used to work at. Uh, Bob Roberts up on Melrose. Hi, Bob. Um, I d wasn't a tattoo artist. I was uh, a meet and greet with the customers, and I talked to them about uh, tattooing and tattoos and what they were going to get and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Try to ease their nervousness and that kind of thing. Convince them not to get drunk first. Um, go get the beer, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm obviously wearing the pale makeup and the cat wing eyes and the dark lipstick and all that stuff so things haven't really changed that much now have they so anyway there's more pictures but it's just a pain in the ass to show them so I'm not I'm not gonna um, one of these days I'll make a a video a video with um, like all the pictures of how I've looked um, you know for for 30 years now and that could be pretty interesting so anyway, um, I am 50 years old, and I've been in the subculture for 32 years since I was uh, 18 years old when it first started in about 1981. I was a punk rocker, and then um, a club opened called The Veil, vale, which was a new romantic club. Um, it was uh, really, really neat. People used to dress in these elaborate costumes and dance to pretty nifty music. It was a sister club to a club in England called the Blitz Club, and uh, it was just fantastic. It was really lovely. And I think it um, really guided people in the direction of uh, the Gothic um, subculture. It was all about dressing up and dancing and um, dancing very interestingly and painting very intricate things on your face and it was quite beautiful and lovely and exquisite and I actually miss that um, more than I do the goth thing sometimes so maybe I'm a new romantic not a goth if you want to know what new romantic music is like um, rent uh, Marie Antoinette or buy the soundtrack all the music from Marie Antoinette is uh, basically from that time period so anyway, um, when I first started dressing all in black and uh, sort of like these vintagey um, clothes with these old black shoes from the 30s and velvet and Victorian and you know all this stuff, there were only about maybe 10 or 15 people that look like that, um, that's, that stand out anyway. Uh, it just wasn't popular yet, and it didn't have a name yet. Um, we used to call it uh, Gloom and Doom right at the beginning, and uh, then it kind of germinated into Death Rock, 
which was actually um, music, actually live music bands that we used to go see. And then it kind of morphed into uh, gothic. And it wasn't, you weren't a goth, you were gothic. So that's the term, that's the way the term was used. There was no goth for a while, that's a later, that was a later term. So there was about 10 or 15 people. There was one girl named Kitty who did a perfect Susie type look and it was extraordinary and she looked fantastic. And the thing that was great about her, she was like the first person to do that in our, you know, our area or whatever. So she was, you know, like a heroine really. Um, so she really stood out as being very, very unique because nobody else uh, emulated Susie like that. And she looked just perfect down to every last detail. She did the makeup perfectly, the clothes, everything. And then there was um, like people in bands like Roz Williams of Christian Death, Eva O, um, um, Mary or Dinah Cancer from 45 Grave, uh, and some other, some of the other guys in 45 Grave, I guess. Um, Stephanie, who I believe is in the Flesh Eaters for a little while. Uh, there were a bunch of bands. Die Schlafflosen, A Photo Culture, The Super Heroines, Christian Death, uh, Radio Werewolf, etc. and so forth. And they were all from different places in Los Angeles and Dave Gray from Buddha Church was one of them so there were just like you know one here one there you know dotted around not very many people at all probably around 10 and and me of course and um, I remember there was an article in Vogue that had some a photo spread that was of uh, very um, gothic looking clothing just you know black and drapey and you know really beautiful but the models were like waif looking and you know kind of dead looking and it looked pretty morbid so I thought well there's no way that this is going to become popular you know so anyway um, so you had death rock and we used to go and we'd watch the bands and of course we didn't dance or anything and a club did open called Theatre des Vampires, and they played the music from England, which is what we called Gothic. So it was the music from England that was Gothic. And um, that club opened, and you know there was some attendance at that. It was pretty quiet and and you know. Um, intimate, um, pretty great club actually. And then uh, the guys who own Vinyl Fetish opened a club called Fetish at the Berwyn Entertainment Center and that just took off and all of a sudden we had like hundreds of goths, uh, gothic people I should say, and we had no idea where they sprang from honestly. But a lot of them, like the real serious people, you'd find out that they were from Thousand Oaks or Reseda or somewhere like way out in the middle of nowhere and they were the only person that was like that you know in their little neighborhood and they just kind of grew like a plant would grow in the darkness kind of strange and twisted you know <laughs> they would you know like like Roz, Roz is from Pomona you know and grew up in a very strange situation so you know that breeds pretty interesting people I think so um, the term gothic to apply to people uh, in a subculture wasn't really used um, too much in LA because we were mostly into death rock. We considered ourselves death rockers. And a f kind of funny thing, when the club first opened, um, none, of the, none of the death rockers or goths or whatever you want to call them uh, danced. They were too cool to dance. They would all kind of 
look down disdainfully down their noses at anybody who who broke into dance. Um, the New Romantic Club was more into dancing, and the music was very danceable, and was kind of made to do that. But at Fetish, um, at the very, very beginning, it just wasn't, you know, what you did, which I think, you know, that, you know when you look back on that, that's really, really funny. So, um, I was also asked, what was it like, uh, how did the general population react to such an extreme subculture being in their midst kind of thing and I have to say that they didn't really react well I uh, myself was punched in the face and knocked out uh, it was spit on full in my face I had my wrist grabbed and wrenched around by somebody trying to see the tattoo on the back of my hand here this tattoo this is the first tattoo I ever got, by the way. Kind of an intense decision. It was worth it, but it was really hard to live with for a while. Um, so let's see. Uh, I got kicked out of stores. I got yelled at by complete strangers. Told, you know, how could you deform your body that way? And, you know, stuff like that. And how could you distort or, you know how could you do that and all this stuff and um, yeah it was pretty intense I caused quite a few traffic accidents because people were looking at me instead of the road that happened quite a bit <laughs> um, I don't carry it as a badge of honor but maybe I should let's see and uh, generally you know we didn't get any of the nice comments that you get nowadays, really. Um, maybe a few little old ladies, you know, if they saw that you were wearing old-fashioned clothes, would compliment you on your clothes, but um, mostly people really stayed away, and or they got in your face, one or the other. So, yeah, not the best, really. Anyway, um, I think I've talked about whole thing pretty much in some detail. If you have any other questions, please feel free to write them out in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and I really appreciate you taking out the time to watch my Bohemian Gothic Salon. So you have a good evening now, okay? Goodbye.